Thank you Brilliant for sponsoring this video. The most recent Obsidian update has actually changed the way that I view Obsidian, the way that I use Obsidian, and might have some changes in the future as well. When you're inside of Obsidian, you can use Control P or Command P to bring up the command palette, and then type in Release Notes, and you can see Show Release Notes will then bring up all of the release notes for you to have a read through and look through. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see a complete list of previous changes can be found in the change log, which once you've clicked, you can see it directs you to the Obsidian website, and it gives you the change log of all of the past updates. So there's the 8th June, 7th June, and all of the ones before that. But do bear in mind that you can see we've got green, which is public, and then we've got purple, which is catalyst. So they were the, the behind the scenes, the insider updates. You see there's another catalyst update, another catalyst update. So the public ones are what you'll see if you're not an insider. So this is the version 1.6 update. The first visual change, which some of you familiar with Obsidian may have already noticed, is my left ribbon. I, I don't have a left ribbon anymore. It doesn't exist because I've hidden it. So if I go to the settings, which you can also see a change, there is an option to switch between vaults, which we'll get to. But if I go to the settings, which is now in the left sidebar, go to the appearance tab, scroll down where it says show inline title, show tab title bar, you can now show or hide the ribbon. And for me, this is really useful. And the reason it's useful is if I go into manage ribbon, I would normally hide lots of things or show things when I'm adding community plugins. You can see I've actually got rid of a lot of community plugins, but instead of having the buttons scattered around inside of the ribbon, I can just hide the ribbon and I don't need to hide any buttons in the ribbon because I just don't see the ribbon. And then talking about plugins, core plugins. If I go to the word count, you can see I've now enabled the core plugins word count. And the reason I didn't have that enabled is because I used a community plugin. And I used the community plugin because if I was to highlight words, it wouldn't actually show any of the words. So if I go down to the bottom, you can see there's 22 words in this file. Now when I highlight these three words, it shows there's three words and 21 characters. So the core plugin is now counting words that's being highlighted. So you don't need better word count. Love the update. So I'm just going to highlight these, turn them into dip boxes to say they've done it. So I've done that one, done that one, haven't done that one, I've done that one. Right, so the next one, Vault Switcher. Looking at my documents, you can see I've got three folders in an OBS folder, standing for Obsidian. So I've got an Obsidian onboarding, which is my course, personal and then private. Personal is what I'm currently in. So if we have a look down the bottom left, you can see there is the personal vault. And you've got the options that came up before that was at the top of the file score plugin. So there was the name of the vault at the top of the file score plugin. And then when you hover it over, it shows you the files and folders. So just under 7,000 files, 23 folders. But I've also got a private vault, which is just a folder on my computer that has a .obsidian folder in it. So now when I click into Obsidian, there's private, there's Obsidian onboarding. So you can quickly switch between vaults. If I click on Obsidian onboarding, it then opens up my Obsidian onboarding vault. Then if I click into Obsidian onboarding, click to personal, it takes me back to personal. So I can quickly switch, vault switch, between vaults, between folders. Now I think the reason this might be more powerful than you initially think is because now when you have a vault inside of a vault, it's actually easy to switch between them. So if I go to my others folder, this is mainly for external documents, so Excel files, zip files, etc. And I create a new folder, so new folder, and let's call it a work vault. Now when I go to the vault switcher, go to manage vaults, I now have my vault switcher. So I can open folder as vault, then I go into my personal vault, go into the others folder and use work vault. So I can select folder and you can see it's now opened a new vault. So this is a new vault, it's called work vault, which is a folder inside of a folder. If I create a new folder in here and say projects, sources, create a new note in projects and say project one, I now have project one file in projects folder with a sources folder, and that's inside of my work vault, vault folder. But if I go back to my personal vault, and then we have a look at the others, then go to work vault, there's the folders, there's the file. So if you want to have a work context, you can go 
Vault Switcher, go to Work Vault, here's your context. And the reason this is important is this is a unique vault. So the hotkeys can be specific. The look can be specific. The ribbon, you can see the ribbon is back in this vault. So you can have a work workspace, a personal workspace, a private workspace, and quickly switch between the vaults using this new Vault Switcher far quicker than you could before. And when you combine this with Obsidian Sync, so say Obsidian Sync is in the work vault, but not inside of my personal vault, you can have a collaborative sync vault, which if we have a look at the release notes, you can see they've done a lot of work on Obsidian Sync. We could have a collaborative sync vault in the work vault, but then have a personal sync vault in the personal vault, personal being synced up, work being synced up, but it means that you can have a work vault on your phone and not have all of your personal stuff in there, quickly being able to switch between them on your computer. Hopefully that made sense and you could follow along. If not, ask some questions in the comments and I'll get back to you. And then when it comes to those people that use footnotes, I struggled using footnotes unless I had community plugins to help me out, mainly because I struggled to find them and remember them. But you can see here, thing one, thing two, this is just writing. So you can see I'm writing things in a file. And then this is the syntax. If I zoom in, this is the syntax for a footnote. It's a bracket, then a caret sign, and then whatever the footnote is. So you see here, we've got reference to. And when I hover, as you saw, there is a hover for the footnote. So you know what the reference is. If I add a link into the footnote, so I've now linked the same file, and I hover over, you can see there's the link, and then I hold control, because that's what I have for page preview, I can now see the source file. So if you have a source that you want to reference, you can hover over the footnote, and then go into the source via the page preview. That is really useful for research, because when you actually footnote something, you can see the source, you can see the file. But that's not all. If I remove the number and then go to type in, you can see it's given me a suggestion for all the footnotes in the file. There's the footnote two. And there's the footnote one. If I add something that isn't in there, so let's say footnote three, you can see when I hover over, it says unable to find the section. So it's a very similar error signal to when you have something linked, whether it's a block ID or a heading, something like that, and you've deleted the file or deleted the heading or say unable to find it. Well, that's basically what the footnotes is. So in order to create the footnote, we go bracket, caret, we type in the actual footnote that we want, so three, and then I'm gonna go colon because this is what I actually want the footnote to be, writing a new footnote. Now when I hover over three, it says writing a new footnote because it can link between the three and the three. And I'm just gonna quickly go into source mode here so you can see all of the markdown. So that's what it looks like uh, for the actual footnote bit. And that's what it looks like for the inline footnote. Now, for those of you unfamiliar, I do have a second channel where I'm talking about my research and what I actually do with Obsidian, the stuff that I talk about. And it's related to sports coaching and my own personal development inside of Trampoline Now. But obviously that is in-person in training, whereas in Brilliant, you're doing things, you're practically applying theory into practice during the lessons. There are interactive lessons for maths, data analysis, programming. I use their probability lessons to help me understand the Bayes rules from Bayesian statistics so that I can understand predictive processing and how that applies to mental models, explanations of motor movement, motor programs, and the way that we learn to move, how we learn to move. And that's one of those video essays that I've mentioned that's on the second channel. But Brilliant goes even further than that, talking about scientific thinking and problem solving using data, using analysis, using graphs to try and understand what it is that we're looking at. And for me in my research, this actually relates to embodied cognition, being able to embody the thinking that you're doing through either visualized interactive lessons like you can see on the Brilliant website or through other technical tools that I've been seeing through some of the research from a guy called Dor Abrams. But to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash Danny Talk Text or click on the link in the description below and you'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So they're the parts of the update that have interested me the most. Of course, you can go through the release notes and have a look at all of the information that they've changed, but this is what's most significant to me. Let me know what you've really liked from the update in the comment section below.